Good news. There's a way to fight COVID-19 and it involves chocolate. Dark chocolate, that is. And if you like green tea or muscatine grapes, all the better, because those do as well. New studies have come out in the last month that show these substances, the extract from green tea um, and green tea itself, as well as dark chocolate, as well as uh, that from muscadine grapes. And actually, I just ordered some muscadine grape and seed extract just the other day, um, are helpful in preventing the replication of COVID-19 within cells. Remember these things, COVID-19 uses the spike protein attached to cells, then use this furin-like cleavage mechanism to get through cells and dump its RNA into the cell and replicate. Well, that replication involves using your proteins to do so. Um, and these proteases, which are enzymes that cause the building of these proteins can be interrupted. They can be plugged up <laughs> and made inactive. Uh, these reproduction within the cell can be made inactive by some of the substances in dark chocolate, green tea, and muscadine grapes. So let's look at this exciting news. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put myself in the corner real quick. Uh, here's the paper. Um, it just came out uh, November 30th of 2020. Um, and it talks about the main protease, M-PRO, of SARS-CoV-2, um, you know, the use, uh, basically these compounds uh, that have all kinds of technical names help to sort of block, if you will sell the replication of various proteins, these foreign proteins, according to the instructions of the SARS-CoV-2. Okay. Remember, in other videos, I said there are many ways that you can begin to interrupt this replication, we need a comprehensive system. Masks, physical distance, being outdoors, exercise, and your basic underlying health measures all prevent you from one getting, well, if you are con in contact with the uh, with SARS-CoV-2, not to get it as badly, right? And to also have your own initial natural immune response be higher to it and prevent the initial transmission itself. Again, social distancing and masking and so forth. Best practices. Now, once it does get into your lungs and into your body, there's these things called ACE2 receptors. And we found that even nicotine, nicotine from cigarettes, acetine, nicotinamide, which is a form of vitamin B, et cetera, can help with messing with those, uh, with interrupting at that level, helping the virus get a foothold in your body, right? There are other therapies as well that can prevent some of the side effects of that, including the inflammatory side effects. Dexamethasone is one of those therapies. Ivermectin is one of those therapies. These are not completely natural. Even vitamin D3 helps to modulate the blood response, right? So there are vitamins, therapies, and nutrients that can help moderate some of the damaging effects of it and, and, and allow and clear up room for a healthy and natural immune response or even a vaccine induced immune response to operate better. So most of these things have been preventive to keep the virus from getting in your body. If it does get in your body, keep it from gaining a foothold. If it does gain a foothold, keep it from, from <clears throat> keep, keep the immune system response strong and keep it from replicating or having a higher viral load. But, uh, and I've talked about all these different things. I talked about say, nitric oxide and segmented nasal breathing. I talked about CBD and omega-3s and all these, these anti-inflammatories that can help again with these responses. But now we're dealing with the fourth or fifth stage of this, where they actually gotten into the cell and it's replicating. And it's this thing called a protease, right? You've got your cells in, they've fused with the membrane, they've gotten in, they've got RNA, right? It's, it's influencing your cell to, uh, to create these proteins, right? Uh, instructing your cell to make the proteins and make more of itself, right? And then it has to construct these proteins out of your own, out of a protease, out of an enzyme that allows this protein to be constructed. Apparently, and thankfully, these rather delicious foods <laughs> get in the way of that protease activation, that enzyme activation by clogging it up, okay? 
So let's go ahead and, and look forward on this. Okay, study chemical compounds in green tea, dark chocolate may inhibit a key SARS-CoV-2 enzyme. Okay, chemical compounds found in again, green tea and dark chocolate combine to and block the function of a particular protease, which is the enzyme that allows the SARS-CoV-2 to replicate within your cells, according to a new study. Plant biologists in the North Carolina State University. Proteases are important to health and viability of cells and viruses. If proteases are inhibited, cells cannot perform many important functions such as replication. Again, you want them to be inhibited in this case because it's replicating this virus, okay? The research performed both computer simulations and lab studies showing that the main protease in SARS-CoV-2 virus or the M-PRO reacted when confronted with a number of different plant chemical compounds known for their potent anti-inflammatory, hello, and antioxidant properties. So not only are they good for this, they're good across the board because they're helping you clear up and clean up your body here. Um, and they studied muscadine grapes, cacao powder, dark chocolate, and green tea as the main substances that do this, all right? What they do is they bind to different sites in the pocket on this MPRO or this protease, essentially overwhelming it to inhibit its function. Muscadine grapes contain these inhibitory chemicals in their skins and seeds. Plants use these compounds to protect themselves. So it's not surprising that plant leaves and skins contain these beneficial compounds. Okay, so I'm in favor of a comprehensive approach. Interrupt along every site of the gaining the foothold, replication, ACE2 receptors, and do as many as you can from the natural and health enhancing standpoint. And you're gonna be in much better case whether you choose to take vaccines not to choose to take them, whatever your choices are. Um, I've seen none of these contradicted or counteracting with the effectiveness of vaccines themselves. Uh, and again, I mean, if you're looking at the overall, um, the overall importance to this when it comes to transmission of vaccines, right? Because if you really take care of these things, you're going to limit your own symptoms, limit and, if, and bring up the effectiveness of your own immune response. Um, uh, and this is becoming more important as we're running into mutants now. Mutant variations of these spike proteins that are causing us to, um, if the spike protein, right, in the mutant is not recognized by your system, okay, it only recognizes the old form, and this thing does get into your cell and start to replicate, all right, or try to replicate, and these substances prevent it from replicating, again, you're aiding your immune system and you're aiding your infectiousness, you're aiding your viral load and so forth. Indeed, news of the increased transmissibility of the new variant is often accompanied by a seemingly reassuring dimension that the variant is not more deadly. Many news outlets have called it the law of declining virulence, which suggests that a more transmissible virus will be associated with milder illness. This idea behind this is the theory that viruses that evolve to be more deadly will wipe out their host before being passed on, okay? Limiting chance of transmission. Unfortunately, given the long infectious period of COVID-19, the potential for asymptomatic transmission and the length of time between infection and death, there is no reason why this rule of thumb should hold, okay? But given that we have more transmissible variant that does not appear to be more deadly, should we be happier about this? The answer was that was no. But here is the point there. If it has a longer incubation inside your body, right? And it has a, and it has a longer period of asymptomatic transmission to other people. It's really, really key to stop the replications to keep the viral load down, no matter what the actual, um, whether it's a mutation or the original COVID-19 virus. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay. That's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, I, I think that was, oh, there was one other one. There was one other one here. Um, this is from Science Daily and it, it says the same thing. It was also on November 30th. I think I gave a pretty good explanation. Um, yeah, it just gives a little bit more information on it. And, and then I'll just um, close this out. Proteases are important to the health and viability of cells. Um, 
and they again were studying how how nutraceuticals uh, uh, mix up with that. Uh, M pro that is the Proteus here is required for the virus to replicate and assemble itself. Um, computer simulations so that this okay and we already talked about computer simulations and we already kind of talked about the other um, aspects as well. So let's go ahead and and and, and pretty much leave it there. Exciting news. Get your chocolate, <laughs> but dark chocolate, guys. You know, milk chocolate more inflammatory. Um, I'm vegan, so um, there's lots of amazing vegan chocolate out there. Maybe do a whole nother series on um, on the kinds of vegan chocolates out there that are are tasty and and also helpful with, with COVID. But anyway, I just thought I'd pass that along. Uh, uh, some more exciting and another plank in in this larger um, series on COVID-19 that I'm presenting to help develop a comprehensive approach to COVID-19. So again, thanks for watching. Um, uh, if you if you like this, um, maybe support my research by clicking on the PayPal button on my main YouTube channel, Citizen Zeus. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell if you want notification of new videos like this. Appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk later. Bye.